Hi, I am Dr. Aslam Khan and today we are going to explain the phylum Aeschylminthus. Aeschylminthus is derived from Greek language and it is composed of two words. The Aesch, Aesch is called sac-like and Helminth as we have discussed in a previous lecture that Helminth means worms and the study of worms is called Helminthology. So basically Aeschylminthus, these are sac-like worms are round worms. The Aeschylminthus phylum comprises five classes, the Gastrotrica, Rotifera, Kynorinca, Nematomorpha and Nematoda. And out of these five classes, the most important is the class Nematoda. And therefore, the phylum Aeschylminthus is also called as phylum Nematoda. Here, we will consider this Aeschylminthus phylum as phylum Nematoda. Common examples of phylum Nematoda are Ascaris lumbricides, Antirobius vermicularis, Strongylides, and Cynorhabditis elegans. For the Cynorhabditis elegans, it is free living. These animals, the Ascaris lumbricides, Antirobius vermicularis, and Strongylides, these are the parasites of humans and animals. We are going to discuss the general characteristics of phylum Nematoda or phylum Aeschylminthus. We have to explain these two examples, the Ascaris lumbricides and Antrobius vermicularis. These animals or worms are very much important according to their parasitic positions and cause infestation and infections in the animals as well as human beings. So first of all, Ascaris lumbricides. These two diagrams show the Ascaris lumbricides. This is Ascaris lumbricides. It's biological name, so I'm going to underline this. The Ascaris lumbricides are the endoparasites of human beings and these live in the intestines. Basically, these live in the small intestine of the human beings and live freely in the lumen of the small intestine. These are not attached to the wall of the intestine. Ascaris lumbricides are the endoparasites of human, live freely in the lumen of small intestine. Sexes are separate. Male is smaller and female is larger. The size of male is 6 to 12 inches while size of female is 8 to 16 inches. This is male. This is diagrammatic illustration of the female. In case of both male and female, the anterior end, these are the mouth. Mouth parts of the worms. And the body of male is slightly curved at the end at posteriorly. So posteriorly it is curved. We can say that posteriorly the male is curved. This is mouth, this is the excretory opening, this is the posterior curve of the tail, these are the pineal setae. There are two pineal setae present on the posterior end in the form of hook or curved portion of the tail of the male. So pineal setae are the copulatory organs of the male. First, this is the cloaca. In female, this is the mouth, this is the excretory pore. This is female vaginal opening, this is anus and this is tail, the pointed tail. In both male and female, the anterior ends bear mouth and excretory pores and these are pointed. While in case of male, the posterior end or posterior tail is curved hook. In case of females, the tail is straight and elongated or pointed. It's not curved or hooked like male. So this is basically the sexual dimorphism present in the scarus. In disease caused by scarus, it is called as ascaruses. And most often the children are affected as they play and feed in the soil and a lump of soil contains thousands of eggs of these worms and the incidence of these worm infestation is higher in children than adults. The second worm Antirobius vermicularis. First we have to label this diagram. This is the anterior mouth of the Antirobius. This is the esophagus. This is called bulb. Then intestines. This is the reproductive tract or reproductive organs of the anterobius vermicularis form in which the vagina or testes are present. This is the coiled or hook shaped tailed, hook tailed having the excretory pore. The anterobius vermicularis, it infests the colon, appendix and anus. Again, the incidence is highest in children as compared to the adult one. In anus, it causes severe itching in anus it causes severe itching while it causes inflammation of the colon and appendix or inflammation of the mucous membrane of the colon and appendix Probius vermicularis is also called as pinworm due to its shape now we are going to explain the general characteristics of the phylum Aeschylminthus and phylum Nematoda so first of all the, the word Aeschylminthus or Nematoda both are the Greek words Aeschylminthus, as I discussed, that as means sac like and helmet means worm. While the word nematoda is also a Greek word, it means thread like. 
So basically these are sac like or thread like worms having cylindrical body. There are five classes of phylum as Chalmenthes, the class Gastrotrica, Rotifera, Kynorinca, Nematomorpha and Nematoda. Out of these five classes the most important class was the class Nematoda and therefore this phylum is also called as phylum Nematoda. So discuss the general characteristic of phylum Nematoda basically the class of phylum as Chalmenthes. So these are also called as round worms due to their cylindrical body shape these are also referred to as round worms. Worms have cylindrical body or if we elaborate this word these bear long cylindrical bodies with both ends are tapered as we have seen in the Ascaris diagram or Enterobius vermicularis diagram that the animals had cylindrical and elongated body having both ends as tapered. These animals are triploblastic and have three body layers the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. This, this shows the bilateral symmetry and can be divided into two equal halves by imaginary lines. These are also called as pseudocyanoids because the true body cavity and true salome is absent in these animals. These are non-segmented and no segments on the body and are most often the soft bodied animals. Next is the ectoderm or the external layer of the body. So in case of the nematodes, the ectoderm lacks cilia. There are no cilia present on the ectoderm. However, these ectoderm are covered with the cuticle. Cuticle is the protective layer on the skin of these animals or these worms. Protect them from the host immune attack or host body defense. So, so ectoderm lacks cilia while it bears cuticle. There is no specialized respiratory system in case of the nematodes and these are deficient in the respiratory system. However, circulatory system is present in the form of a fluid in the body. So there is a body fluid contained in these worms which perform the function of the blood. So circulatory system is present in the form of body fluids and these are also responsible for the exchange of gases and body fluids also execute this respiratory system. The alimentary canal is basically a tubular digestive tract extending from the mouth to the anus. So this complete digestive tract starting from the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, intestines and up to anus, this constitutes the alimentary canal. Alimentary canal is present in the nematodes and this is well developed starting at the mouth and ending at the anus. So both mouth and anus are present in these nematodes. Locomotion. So the nematodes are all motile having developed muscular system. Nematodes have four longitudinal muscles which are responsible for locomotion of the animal. They lack the circular muscles. No circular movement and circular muscles present in the nematodes. However, the longitudinal muscles which are four sets, they constitute the locomotion and the animals show whip-like motion or whip-like movement due to the presence of these four longitudinal muscles. The capacity of regeneration is absent in nematodes. If the part of the nematode or scarus or enterobius worms are cut off, these parts cannot regenerate another animal and these parts are considered dead. So there is no fragmentation, no regeneration, no asexual operation present in phylum nematoda. Next is the excretory system. In case of nematodes, the excretory system is present in the form of two longitudinal excretory canals these two longitudinal excretory canals are running on the lateral side of the body for example this is the body and these two excretory canals are running on the lateral as and open at the ventral side behind the mouth ventral ventrally behind the mouth so these excretory canals open in the form of excretory pores just behind the mouth in case of nervous system these animals bear a nerve ring nerve ring encircles the pharynx this nerve ring acts as brain and then this nerve ring sends nerve fibers to whole body parts to control the coordination of the animal. Next is the reproductive system. In case of reproduction, sexes are separate or we can say these are unisexual animals or dioecious animals having male and female are separate from each other. Males have long coiled testes and females have coiled ovaries. They have complete reproductive tract in the form of vesicles, the reproductive organs and ejaculatory ducts. These are oviparous, it means that these lay eggs. For example, in case of Ascaris, Ascaris female lay 2 lakh eggs per day. In case of Ascaris, the female lay 2 lakh eggs per day, while, while this female lay about 27 million eggs in her life because these are parasites and most of the eggs are ruined and destructed by the host immune system so they, 
Next is the mode of life. So some of the animals are parasites, for example, Ascaris rubricides, Enterobius vermicularis, and Strangulites. These are all parasites of animals and human beings. Neurobladus elegans serve as free living worm. Next is the molting. You know that the bodies of these worms are covered by the cuticle layer. So they shed cuticle in their life stages. They produce another cuticle layer. So time and again they shed their cuticle layer and produce other cuticle layer. So this is called molting. Most of only the nematodes are white colored or creamy colored. But in case of Ascaris, Ascaris has red tinge. Our all other worms are white creamy colored. Next is the sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism means that the males and females can be identified. It means that the appearance of male sex is quite different from the female sex. For example, in case of Ascaris, as we stated earlier, that the, Ascaris, that the Ascaris male has hook-like tail, while in case of the female Ascaris, the tail was sharp and linear, not hook-like. So this was the sexual dimorphism. On the basis of this parameter or this morphological feature, you can differentiate between the male and female. So if you can differentiate between the male and female species, this is called sexual dimorphism. So these were the general characteristics of the phylum nematoda. Now we will discuss their economical importance. Nematodes or these worms are significantly economical because this causes diseases in humans and animals. Diseases in humans, diseases in animals. The diseases in human beings prone them to the medical costs in form of treatment or medical expenditure. While well, in case of animals, the expenditure on health as well as loss of production bear major loss to the economy significantly important worms so huge worm infestation is seen worm infestation is seen in the animals the senior brightest elegans these are the free living worms and these are also economically important because these convert the organic matter in the soil into nitrates and then proteins so these increase soil fertility these worms are very much important Cynorabritus elegans as these are improving the soil fertility by converting or decomposing the organic matter present in the soil into nitrates and return all the nutrients from the organic matter or dead organisms to the soil so increase the soil fertility. So this was all about the phylum nematoda or phylum Ascalmenthes.